Chancellor, Mr David Gonski, Vice Chief of the Defence Force, Air Marshal Mark Binskin, representing Chief of Air Force, Air Marshal Kim Osley, Commander of the Australian Defence College, Major General Simone Wilkie, Commandant ADFA, Commodore Bruce Kafer, distinguished guests, members of the university, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. As the Rector or Academic Head of UNSW Canberra at the Australian Defence Force Academy, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here this afternoon on behalf of the university to this graduation ceremony. I acknowledge the Indigenous traditional owners of the land which this site occupies. UNSW Canberra is geographically removed from the Sydney-based campus of the University of New South Wales. So it is easy for students and the community here in the national capital to forget that UNSW Canberra at ADFA is part of that larger organisation. UNSW's relationship with the Australian Defence Force is something which is very important to the university. And while ADFA is its current instantiation, this relationship goes back to 1967, almost half a century. And when you remember that UNSW was only founded in 1949, it's a relationship which has existed for most of the life of the university, providing world-class tertiary education, first of all at HMAS Creswell, then RMC Duntroon, and then more recently ADFA. It really is an integral part of the university. At this graduation ceremony this afternoon, the graduates come from our postgraduate programs. And in these programs, students come both from defence and from the general community. Interestingly, UNSW Canberra now graduates nearly twice as many people in postgraduate programs as we do in undergraduate programs. And this makes us effectively the nation's most postgraduate university. The importance of UNSW Canberra is made clear by the attendance at this ceremony of the Chancellor, senior members of the university and senior defence staff. I walk on them all and thank them for taking the time to join us this afternoon. Today, this congregation is assembled in the traditional way to witness the conferring of postgraduate awards in engineering, science and technology, business and the humanities and social sciences upon those who are qualified to receive them. Those of you who are about to receive awards have every right to be proud of what is a considerable achievement marked by hard work and self-discipline. I congratulate you all and wish you happiness, personal satisfaction and success in the various ways in which you will apply your learning. When you take a degree from UNSW, you become a permanent member of the university. I hope that you will continue to contribute to the life of the university as a member of our global alumni community. It is of the greatest importance to the university that it should be able to look to you, its graduates, to forge and maintain close links between the university and the community in which you will work and live. Moreover, graduates may play a significant role in the development of the university by offering it the fruits of their experience, which they gain in applying the intellectual disciplines that they have acquired at the university. Every university owes a duty to the community which it serves to produce graduates trained in a variety of skills and disciplines and able to provide the intellectual leadership which an increasingly complex society requires. You, of course, are part of that product and upon your achievements, the reputation of the university depends. Wherever you are, the good wishes of all here go with you. I would also like to congratulate your families. I know that you will agree that some of the credit for your success belongs to them. They have assisted and encouraged you while you have been students and their support entitles them to share in the satisfaction which is rightly yours today. I now invite the Chancellor, Mr David Gonski, to welcome the Assembly. Distinguished guests, members of the university, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me enormous pleasure on behalf of the entire University of New South Wales family to welcome each of you here
to this conferring of academic awards of the University of New South Wales at UNSW Canberra at the Australian Defence Force Academy. As the rectors mentioned, the University of New South Wales relationship with the Australian Defence Force dates back almost 50 years, 47 to be precise. 27 of those years have been closely allied to the Australian Defence Force Academy here in Canberra. During this time, a range of cutting-edge programs have developed that have not only uh, fit the needs of community, but have become cost-effective solutions to Defence Force education requirements. As a university, we're very keen to expand the range of services available to Defence, and we seek always to do so as a preferred provider of education offering a full spectrum of undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. I'm very pleased to report that in 2013, UNSW Canberra at ADFA has continued its success generally, but also in attracting research funding from a range of government departments, as well as from industry and defence-based and related organisations. Staff have established strong and enduring collaborations with other universities and agencies, including NASA, DSTO, and the CSIRO. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you it's a great privilege to be here today. And as I said this morning, I feel extremely uneasy as I stand here. I am not really at home in a gym, I have to be honest. Neither am I dressed for that activity just at the moment. I note that behind me is a climbing wall and that there are basketball rings right around the room. I hope no one is going to make a command or request me to do anything in relation to either. I'm also somewhat daunted when I look at the sea of hoods over there where I see our graduates coming forward with their postgraduate degrees. How wonderful they are to make a decision to take on higher, higher education. How wonderful it is to see the sea of PhD hoods there, the MBAs and generally. Congratulations to all of you, both in my opinion in choosing the best university, but also getting through it, doing well and acceding to higher degrees than just the basic ones that are often taken and achieved. I want to say my trepidation is that they know more than I do and unfortunately as you see them come up, you'll know they do. I want, ladies and gentlemen, also if I may, to congratulate all of you who are here today as the families, the backup teams and so on, to those who are graduating today. Your, the congratulations is well earned by you, I know, because you've put so much time and effort into helping the, the candidates who are getting their degrees today and indeed in pushing them along to where they've got to. Well done and you're very welcome here. If I may, I'd also like to remark on our special guests who are here. It is wonderful to have such high-ranking members of the Defence Force. You do us enormous honour being here. You also, in my opinion, indicate how strongly you see education and indeed higher education. With respect, I think you're absolutely right. We know you're busy and we hope that you won't be asked to climb up the wall back there or feel you have to as the afternoon drags on. But nevertheless, your presence here is much appreciated and we thank you immensely. If I may, I'd like to also thank all those from the university who are here and from ADFA generally. This is a busy time, getting ready for the break and so on, and we really appreciate you being here. The reason that they're here is they love their students, and I think that love is shown in the spirit that pervades in this place, and I congratulate them. Now, I know you're not here to hear a Chancellor rave on, so let me now wish everybody all the best and call upon the presiding member, Dr. James Hansen, to present the graduands to us for the awards they so richly deserve. Will the candidates for admission to awards at UNSW Canberra at the Australian Defence Force Academy please stand?
Chancellor, I present to you the candidates for admission to awards. In the name of the Council and by the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of New South Wales, I hereby admit each of you to the awards for which you are qualified. Graduates, please be seated. Chancellor, I present to you for the award of the degree of Master of Capability Management, Bernadette Leon Alexander. <laughs> Todd Adam Bertram. Jason Gregory Broderick. <laughs> Fabian Campagnolo. Michael John Chapman. Robert Anthony Cox. Luke Thomas Dixon. Domingo de G. Dule, Jr. <laughs> Benedict Thomas Evans. Christopher John Fox. Cameron Noel Fraser. Lawrence Dionysius Gasparatos. Matthew Ryan Godbold. Colin Peter Gray. Robin Mark Hallertrost. <laughs> Del Lillian Hensley. Justin Daniel James. Bradley James John Gibson. Peter James Kensall. <laughs> P. 
Paul Bradley Manning. James Patrick McDonough. Kate Nicole Minari. Alexander Douglas Nave. Joel Christopher Packer. Parande Putanavijan. David Charles Rigby. Matthew David Rogerson. Christopher Richard Searle. Adam Shortis. Stuart Michael Taylor. Robert John Thompson. <laughs> Scott John Tui. John Conrad Vanterhoff. <laughs> Luke Ryan Van Arken. Michael Lee Van Tilburg. <laughs> Anton Verster. For the award of the degrees of Master of Capability Management and Master of Project Management, Adam John Pearsall. <laughs> For the award of the degrees of Master of Capability Management and Master of Systems Engineering, Simon Christopher Powell. Chancellor, I present to you for the award of Graduate Certificate in Business, Anna Hackett.
Kelly Ann Walter. For the award of the Graduate Certificate in Science and Information Technology, Min Lee. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you for the award of the degree of Master of Arts in Military History, David John Falloon. In Strategy and Management, Richard John Allen. <laughs> Philip Kevin Andrews. Roderick Dylan Hayes McMurdo. <laughs> Erica Saria Seymour. <laughs> Kyla Marie Upton. Naomi van der Linden. In strategy and policy, Alexandra Jane McCubbin. In Strategy and Security, Clifford Ross Delane. Jordan John Gradden. Susan Lee Liddy. <laughs> Antoine Rossolo. For the award of the degree of Master of Business, Rosemary Apicotoa. <laughs> Justin Adam Burdett. Ross Alexander Chapman. <laughs> Joanne Kitanjali Deo. <laughs> Benjamin John Gray. Tyron John Gunbrockoff. <laughs> D. 
Desmond Healy. Gregory Michael Hines. Tanya Jones. Brett Anthony Jorgensen. Christopher Thomas Langmaid. Maxine Gay Laws. Delwyn June Madge. James Olivia McLean Dreyfus. Brett James Mellish. <laughs> Daniel Ivan Milberg. Max Muller. <laughs> Stuart Winston Neal. Geraldine Lee Page. Christopher Francis Pansrum. Stuart Brian Pascoe. James Patton Richens. Mark William Powell. Marcelo Quintieri. Noel Edwin Ramsden. <laughs> Ashley Glenn Rentmeister. Graham Douglas Reynolds. <laughs> Ann
Esther Ruth Roberts. Deborah May Robson. Jassy Louise Simic. <laughs> Esther Sue. Mark Lawrence Vermeer. <laughs> Benjamin Robert Wattam. For the award of the degree of Master of Engineering Science in Aerospace Engineering, Richard Joseph Heath. <laughs> Ian Douglas Naphtali. Christopher Anthony Poli. Adam Edward Wells. Alan Wilkinson. In command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and electronic warfare, Ben David Foley. <laughs> Michael John Gifford. Darren Peter Lowe. <laughs> Gangi Reddy, Rajashekar Reddy. In data communications and analysis, Alastair Stilo. In electrical engineering, Angelo Puglielli. In project management, Marcelino Bueno Jr. <laughs> Venkata Radha Krishna Naidu. For the award of the degree of Master of Management Studies in Human Resource Management, Vernon Partha. In 
In project management, Robert Kahn. For the award of the degree of Master of Project Management, Glenn Patrick Alka. Nicholas Stephen Avino. Malin Manisha Chandradeva. Bradley Scott Davies. David Scott Elliott. Peter Roy Humphrey. Daniel Leonard Jackson. Elizabeth Jesse Kell. <laughs> Brittany Levey. <laughs> Dean McCormack. Hector Mark Nabua. <laughs> Ian Ken Pack. Farsad Raisi. <laughs> Nicholas Walter Riley. <laughs> Susan Vandergeest. Timothy John Walmsley. Mark David Williams. Marcel James Yazbek. Yan Shi Jiang.
for the award of the degree of Master of Science in Command, Control, Communications, Computers, Intelligence, Surveillance, Reconnaissance and Electronic Warfare, Duncan Andrew Scott. <laughs> Timothy James Laidley Willis. In Information Technology, Paul Dutkowski. <laughs> Andrew Peter Gilbert. Amelia Kate Goff. <laughs> Shannon James Peterson. <clears throat> In simulation and experimentation. Rohit Jamwal. For the award of the degree of Master of Systems Engineering in Electronic Warfare, Leonard Peter de Guzman. Nuan Wirakudi. In Marine Engineering, Clint Jean-Claude Domine. In networking, Naresh Mathven. In space systems, John Andrew Armour. In Systems Engineering, Megan Pamela Clark. <laughs> Paul Andrew Clark. Nicola Jane Donaldson. <laughs> Daniel Edward Hodgkinson. Catherine Mary Martin. Brent Allen Osmotherly. Margaret Herma Maria Stumpel. Chanaka Lakmin Wirakadi. <laughs> Ms. 
Robert James Wilson. Siwei David Wu. In test and evaluation, David John Mather. In Weapons and Ordnance, David Andrew Coleman. <laughs> Madushika Chrysanthi Rentmister. Tian Min Ung. For the award of the degree of Master of Arts in History, Gregory Lewis Blake. For the award of the degree of Master of Philosophy in History, for a thesis entitled The Battle of Jarabab, the First Test of the Second AIF, Peter Harvey Davis. In Information Technology, for a thesis entitled the identification of authors using cross-document co-referencing, David Kerner. In mathematics, for a thesis entitled Adiabatic Combustion Waves in Sequential Exothermic Endothermic Reactions, Chao Kian. In politics, for a thesis entitled, The Air Power to Coerce, The Role of Air Power in 21st Century Coercive Diplomacy, Gretchen Elizabeth Fryer. <laughs> for the award of the degree of Master of Engineering in Civil Engineering, Mohammed Wahid Fadus. In electrical engineering, Tarsin Fahima Orchi. <laughs> For the award of the degree of Master of Science in Computer Science, Abdel Monayem Fouad Mustafa Abdallah. Chancellor, I present to you for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. In Aerospace Engineering, for a thesis entitled Cooperative Path Planning for Autonomous Ground Vehicles Using 3D Sensors in Cluttered Environments, Sobers Lord Xavier Francis. Doctor of Philosophy in Civil Engineering for a thesis entitled Progressive Failure Analysis of Composite Laminates Based on Electroplastic, uh, sorry, Elastoplastic and Elastovistoplastic Damage Models. Zhang <laughs> Fen Chen.
and for a thesis entitled Foundation on Sloped Fills Under Repeated Loading, Muhammad Ariful Islam. And for a thesis entitled, Influence of Fines on the Defamation Behaviour of Unbound Granular Materials Under Cyclic Loading, Muhammad Ohidujaman. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Computer Science. For a thesis entitled, Detection of Translator Stylometry Using Pairwise Comparative Classification and Network Motive Mining. Heibazaki Mohammed al Faki. <laughs> and for a thesis entitled, A Society of Mind Agent Architecture, A Case Study Modeling Human Behavior in Road Traffic, George Leyu. And for a thesis entitled, Food Recognition and Volume Estimation in a Dietary Assessment System, Muhammad Hafisa Rahman. <laughs> and for a thesis entitled, Efficient Message Delivery in Underwater Acoustic Networks, Ronnie Hassiner Rahman. And for a thesis entitled, A Human-Guided, Evolutionary-Based Linguistics Approach for Automatic Story Generation, Kun Wang. Mm. And for a thesis entitled, Biometric Security System Design, From Mobile to Cloud Computing Environment, Kai Ji. And for a thesis entitled Anomaly Detection in Wireless Sensor Networks, Miao Shi. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Electrical Engineering. For a thesis entitled Performance Improvement of Doubly Fed Induction Generator Based Wind Energy Conversion Systems During Various Internal Converter Faults. Ahmed Fati Ahmed Abdul. <laughs> and for a thesis entitled Surveillance Image Processing on Embedded Systems, David John Bauman. And for a thesis entitled, Superclip Mathematics as Applied to Fourier Transform Infrared Interferograms, Catherine Jane Conroy. <laughs> and for a thesis entitled, Impact and Utilization of Emerging PHEV in Smart Power Systems, FM Rabiul Islam. And for a thesis entitled, heralded, heralded generation of concurrent quantum resource states via photon subtraction from frequency non-degenerate squeezed light. Catania Brian Kunz.
and for a thesis entitled Integrated Plasmonic Nano Antenna Devices, Ziyuan Li. And for a thesis entitled, New Results on Negative Imaginary Systems Theory with Applications to Flexible Structures and Nano Positioning, Muhammad Abdallah Abdel Salam Mabrok. And for a thesis entitled, A Novel Approach for Analyzing Interconnected Complex Power Systems Using Complete Network Theory, ABM uh, Nasiruj Jama. And for a thesis entitled, Voltage Stability Enhancement of Distribution Systems with Renewable Energy, Narottam Kumar Roy. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Geography, for a thesis entitled, Vulnerability to Sea Level Rise of Coastal Communities in Central Java, Developing a Systems Approach and Perspective. VJ Joseph. And for a thesis entitled, The Efficacy of Electron Spin Resonance for the Dating of Quartz, a case study of the Aeolianites of the Bridgewater Formation in Southeastern South Australia. Sarah Rittner. And for a thesis entitled, Thermal Properties of Alpine Boulder Fields, the potential to provide refuge for the endangered mountain pygmy possum, Boramus parvus. Hai Jing Shi. And for a thesis entitled, Bushfire Risk Assessment at the Urban Bush Interface in Sydney, Australia, an integrated modelling approach. Dominda Tushara Solangarchi. <laughs> and for a thesis entitled, A Remote Sensing Exploration of Land Surface Phonology in the Australian Alps, Jeffrey Thompson. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in History, for a thesis entitled, A Slim Barrier, the Defense of Mainland Australia, 1939 to 1945, Anthony Peter Arnold. And for a thesis entitled British Battle Planning in 1916 and the Battle of Frommel, a case study of an evolving skill, Roger Vernon Lee. <laughs> and for a thesis entitled Australia, the Empire and the Great War in the Air, Michael Wayne John Malkantine. <laughs> and for a thesis entitled Second Party Counterinsurgency, Mark Thomas O'Neill.
Doctor of Philosophy in Mechanical Engineering for a thesis entitled Development of an Optimization Framework for the Design of an Unmanned, uh, for unmanned underwa Underwater Vehicles. Kairul Alam. And for a thesis entitled Black Box Identification and Control for Autonomous Underwater Vehicles, Osama Ibrahim Hassanin Hassan. And for a thesis entitled Impact Resistance of Laminated Hybrid Composite Panels Composed of Compliant and Rigid Plies, Mustafa Zud Rahman. And for a thesis entitled Finite Element Modeling and Analysis of Composite Flywheel Discs, Including Effects of Filament Winding Mosaic Patterns, Muhammad Sayyam Udin. And for a thesis entitled, Tailored Design of Composite Risers for Deepwater Applications, Chungwang Wang. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Oceanography. For a thesis entitled, Modeling the Tidal and Sediment Dynamics in Darwin Harbour, Northern Territory, Australia, Li Li. And for a thesis entitled, Predicting the Oceanic Mesoscale Dynamics in the Australian Region, Robert Henry Woodham. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Physics. For a thesis entitled, Microscopic Wear of Polymers, Micro scratching simulations of asperity surface interactions and debris generation, Yan Yan Liu. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the job of a chancellor is a very good one. It's wonderful from my perspective to be able to meet all of you who've received awards here today. I have to admit that I think, it, even though I've done about 250 graduations, I have never admitted as many doctors in one session, and I congratulate each and every one of you. What a wonderful lot you are, and you've done amazing things. I also, if I may, would like to congratulate all those who received master's degrees and some who received double master's degrees. I kept thinking, I must talk to the rector, if you have two master's degrees, does that mean you get a, an instant saving on a PhD? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a wonderful event, a great event of great achievement, and to make it even better, we have asked a very special person to give the occasional address here this afternoon. The occasional address is to be delivered by Mr. Mark McConnell. Mark studied here at ADFA as an undergraduate cadet. Here he was awarded a Bachelor of Science in 1992. Mark also holds a Graduate Diploma of Logistics Management, a Graduate Diploma of Employment Relations and a Master of Business Administration. Mark has spent 10 years in the RAAF and with airlines in a range of senior operational roles. 
He's completed several degrees and he's run property development projects, but all of that he did after hours. He is a successful angel investor. Mark was named in 2003 and again in 2006, Canberra Entrepreneur of the Year. And he's been seen on the BRW Young Rich List since 2004. Mark now serves on a number of public company boards, but he still takes great pleasure from working with fast-growing private firms, including as chairman of Uber Global, Australia's fastest-growing cloud services business. Mark is also a sought-after speaker, a motivator and a mentor, and he's got particular insight on topics including business, doing business in China, growing successful startups, and the rise of cloud computing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an enormous pleasure to welcome Mark McConn. Chancellor, Rector, distinguished guests, well, what an honour to be here. As they say, deja vu all over again. I first came here in the late 80s as a scholarship holder for ADFA and then uh, proceeded to invest three years of time here in what I'll call the pre-internet era, thank goodness. Well, thanks very much for the opportunity, Michael, and I've been told and reminded on more than one occasion that if I speak for more than a few minutes, he'll revisit my show cause, so uh, perhaps we should move on. For most of you graduates, uh, this is your second, if not third degree. Uh, congratulations for that. Uh, the second degree is what I call real applied learning. In contrast to the first degree, which really is learning how to learn. Indeed, I recall my careers teacher at high school saying, I don't care what you boys study. I don't care if it's nuclear physics or underwater basket weaving. The next three to four years of your life is about setting the neural pathways in place for your future, whilst avoiding becoming a complete social nuisance. I think we largely achieve these aims during my time at ADFA, but looking back, perhaps we should be revisiting the, the ADFA charter when it says, a balanced and liberal education, open to interpretation. So why study? Why prioritise this time in your lives over, say, other activities like playing sport or watching TV, spending time with family and friends? You've made a conscious choice. You've prioritised this time with your academic pursuits and endeavours. You may well be pursuing an academic career, or the applied learning might make you more proficient at your chosen discipline. Or perhaps it's an enabler for promotion. Irrespective of the rationale for why you've chosen to study, this is a building block and it will only get you so far. Calvin Coolidge, the great US president in the 30s, said that nothing can replace persistence. Talent, genius, education will only get you so far. Indeed, the saying, press on, has and will continue to solve the problems of the human race. So when I reflect on the relationships that I've formed over the past 20 odd years since leaving this place, and I can't believe it's gone so quickly, it really strikes me that those men and women who have gone on to achieve great things were not necessarily the most talented by any scholastic definition, but they were the most focused. They were the most tenacious. Today, many of them are in command positions, curl and above equivalents. I can't believe the 17-year-old cadets that I join with are now in command positions, but, but they are. And I tell you what, my heart skips a beat when I see classmates reading eulogies on television from soldiers passed away in, in, in fields afar. And these are the men and women who are performing those endeavours, and I can only think of them as, as teenagers. But these men and women have gone on to achieve amazing things, both in their military pursuits or indeed holding very senior executive positions in multinational companies. They are politicians of various persuasions or indeed in a few cases, they have built $100 million plus businesses from scratch. And they are all cadets here. It is their tenacity, it is their persistence, it is their resilience 
and it's their approach to life that sets them apart, not the fact that they hold that piece of paper that they've earned. As someone who has spent the last decade or so developing trade with Asia, I think it's great to see so many international students here today. Education is a very powerful tool in breaking down cultural barriers and thereby developing trade relationships between Australia and the countries represented today. These relationships are critical in maintaining and enhancing the great standard of living that we enjoy in this, in this country. And indeed, these relationships are critical to assuring Australia's place in the Asian century. In closing, and perhaps it's prudent we do reflect on the great contribution Nelson Mandela made to the world, and if I can be forgiven for paraphrasing such a great man, I'll remind you that education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. The extent to which it does is up to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark, for your wonderful speech. I absolutely agree with you that persistence and focus is very important. But I would be backwards as a chancellor if I didn't say, you've got to be persistent, you've got to have focus, but you've also got to have a degree from the University of New South Wales. <laughs> what the others have done, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure you'd be fine with that. I do absolutely agree with your comments on relationships with overseas, and I think it is quite significant that we have seen such a tour de force today of such students when yesterday it was announced the new Colombo plan, and I think that's absolutely marvellous. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see that Mark was a great scholar here, even though he tells you all sorts of stories about how he did all sorts of things we won't talk about. But he has gone on to learn a great deal in the last 20 years. We're very proud to be associated with Mark. We thank him for coming and we wish him well in the future. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I stood there giving out all these high degrees in aerodynamics, in all sorts of things, I realised that each of the doctors and the masters who came by would know that the whole incendiary, the device that is meant to be protecting me as a Chancellor, which sits there inanimate in the front, was actually useless. I realised that they would know that it doesn't self-power itself, our mace, and I was quite nervous as they came by. They would know better. But for those of you who were worried about my security and expected I might be ordered to climb the wall or do something else terrible, I had a secret weapon. And the secret weapon is that that mace is driven today by our mace bearer, Emeritus Professor Peter Dennis. Peter has not great muscular power. He has, however, an enormous brain, a great love for this place, an enormous spirit for the people who are coming through here and have come through while he's been around. That spirit propels that mace better than anything aerodynamically designed, even though I must admit I haven't got a doctorate in the area or a master's, and I believe that spirit will go on, and I'd like to thank the professor very much for what he does for us. He wasn't even slated to be here today, or at least this afternoon, but he stayed back to do it just to protect me, and I'm very grateful. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, that brings my part of the, this ceremony to an end. I just wanted to make, if I may, two final comments. Firstly, again, congratulations to all of you with your higher, higher degrees. It's absolutely marvellous. You've inspired me, and I'm pretty sure you've inspired us all. And the second comment I wanted to make, I was remiss in not welcoming all the children who are here in the audience of whatever age they may be. Why am I remiss in doing that? Well, this is a great university. Please remember UNSW. This is where we want you. 
and this is your first day of being here, and we're delighted to have you. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite the presiding member to make some concluding remarks. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, graduation ceremonies like today's uh, happen because of the achievement of our graduates. But they are also the result of the skill and hard work of members of UNSW Canberra staff. I know those of you who are graduating today and your families would wish to join with me, with me to thank those staff who have made this event possible. I believe that we should recognise the indispensable role of families and friends in helping to bring the new graduates to this day of triumph. It's wonderful to see so many of you here today to share in the rightful sense of achievement of your loved ones. You've been generous in your applause as the new graduates came forward to receive their testamas, and I'm now going to ask the new graduates to return the compliment. Would all of you who have graduated today please stand and face your family and friends? Graduates, please thank them by clapping. And then salute them by raising your hat. Thank you. Please turn around now and uh, resume your seat. This brings to an end the formal proceedings of the graduation ceremony. Uh, refreshments will now be served in the Academy Cadets Mess. Uh, would the audience please stand while the official party and the graduates leave the venue? 